Nerves are plenty. There'll be plenty going through their minds. They know what they have to do. And the star lineup is not but sensational. It is indeed an outcome, the players. And as they come, I'd just like to give a very quick mention to Julie Calderband from Wigan, who has been a Warriors fan all of our life. And she's watching tonight's grand final from her bed at the Wigan and Lee Hospice. All the Sky team here and the Wigan Warriors commend her fight against her illness and her valued support over the years. Let's hope for Julie Calderback, Wigan, Phil, do the business. Well, she'll certainly be hoping that. We're all hoping for a great game. You know, before a big game like this, it's the mind that has the most important role, controlling the anxiety and concentration levels of all the players. There's obviously the distractions taking place as you walk around. There's the talk and hype of the game that's been built up all week. And there's a delay that doesn't happen to a usual Super League game. You're out on the field, hanging around for a few more minutes, the music's pumping, the, the legs are feeling a little bit maybe nervous at this point. You have to control all of those emotions and maintain your concentration for when this game begins. Well, Tony Smith just wishing all of his men all the very best. The opening exchanges will be absolutely fierce, Brian Carney. Absolutely, Eddie, you're right. You can expect a great start when this game kicks off. When you emerge from that tunnel, as the Wigan and Warrington players just have, the first thing that strikes you is that enormous north stand tearing up to your left-hand side. It makes you feel extremely small in this magnificent stadium. But once you get that out of the way and get the formalities out of the way, the only thing you're praying for is the referee's whistle to start this game. Then the nerves disappear, then you can put into practice what you've worked so hard to achieve. And briefly, Sean, Sean Wayne is aiming to do what you did in 96 and win the double. Well, what a wonderful achievement it would be indeed. It's a, it's a great coaching feat if he can pull it off. And I tell you what, he's got a tremendous side. As I said earlier, Eddie, this game, I can't pick it. I just can't pick this one at all. Well, we're going to know in 80 minutes who wins the grand final of 2013. Matty Smith, the Landstock Trophy winner at Wembley. Will he be the man of the match here tonight? Old Trafford awaits. This should be a spectacular epic. The whistle from Richard Silverwood and 80 minutes ahead. That will be very, very special indeed. And Chris Hill takes the first tackle of the match. And the most important factor, they want to get involved as quickly as possible. Hopefully they won't come up with the error. I just get the feeling that Tony Smith, the Warrington coach, will try to blow Wigan away in the opening 15 minutes. They've done that throughout this season. Can they do it against the Cherry and Whites? Solid defence early there from Harrison Hansen on Paul Wood. He goes down and plays the ball to Mickey Hyam. Here comes Chris Hill with his second run of the grand final. That's tackle number four. They're still deep inside their own half. Lee Breers will kick early in the tackle cap right down the centre of the field. It's collected by Sam Tompkins. But is this going to be a special night for Sam? Well, it, it could be, Eddie, but uh, there's no fear as far as Warrington concerned. And Lee Breers, the experience kicked directly towards Sam Tompkins. We all know how dangerous that Tompkins can be. And this will be interesting to see whether he links himself into the three-quarter line very early in the piece. Gil Dodson goes down on tackle number three. McAlorum is the dummy half. And here comes Lee Mossop, he gets Wigan over the halfway line. McAlorum just waved to the left-hand side. Does that mean he's going that way? Yes, it does. He's found Sean O'Loughlin. Here is Matty Smith. Matty Smith to Blake Green. Good defence, they held off. Didn't take any dummy. Looks like he's picked up a bit of a knock there, Blake Green. He has, he's crumpled to the ground as Smith puts up this kick. And it spirals and into the arms oh, of oh, Stephen Ratchford. Off the hands, into the face. He did well in the end. He certainly did, but it wasn't the best kick, was it? And Blake Green still having attention way down in back play. This is going to be a big blow for Wigan if he doesn't get back up on his feet soon. Well, the referee uh, rightly has stopped the game because uh, there's a, a huge problem for this fella. And you can see that that, that looks like a cheekbone, doesn't it? They're just checking the vision, and obviously there is a problem on the underneath of the, the eye, on the top of the cheekbone. Well, the last time Wigan played against Warrington in a major final was 23 years ago at Wembley, and the standoff that day, Sean Edwards fractured his cheekbone. 
It looks as though maybe the same facial injuries occurred here now to Blake Green. 23 years ago, Sean Edwards was brave enough and some might say foolish enough to play on. He did play on and play very well, but I'm not sure whether Blake Green will. He hasn't moved since that initial contact, surrounded now by medical staff, and it will force him to rejig things. I suppose Sean O'Loughlin will be the automatic choice to perhaps play at standoff if he leaves the field. And that will surely mean he'll have to play a little bit longer than maybe Sean yeah. Wayne wanted him to. Well, it, it was always going to be a problem with the, the regards with his uh, injury, of course. Uh, a lot of people thinking it, it's a huge gamble by Sean Wayne to play Sean O'Loughlin. Oh, that was a swinging arm. That's what's got him. Steve, oh, that's the swinging arm. That's a that's a punch directly yeah. to the face. I'm a massive fan of Ben Westwood. I think he's a tremendous player. He's an aggressive player. He's a dominant player in defence. That's foul play of the highest order. Yeah, and that should be put on report. That doesn't help Wigan though, does it? If they put no. him on report now. Well, it'll be interesting to see what Richard Silverwood does about this. The well, there isn't a great deal he can do about it, uh, Steve-O, because, um, you know, we've had two tackles since then. All he can do is put it, put the incident on report. Uh, we can't deal with that, that foul play incident now. Tony Smith is a fair coach. He will not try and defend his player from this. That's absolutely... Benny Westwood is in control of his actions there. There's yeah. no attempt to wrap up a ball. There's no bouncing off a shoulder. One of the greatest players of this Warrington Wolves team, having the, this players in their side, is Ben Westwood. And he's there guilty of a really grievous act on Blake Green. Well, Blake Green is on his feet, uh, and he has had the very best medical attention from uh, Chris, Gre uh, Chris Brooks, uh, but uh, that has obviously rattled him in the opening two minutes of this grand final, and Ben Westwood has been caught on camera, yeah. and uh, Richard Silverwood, I think, has had maybe a word in his ear, and I think something might be happening here. I think Ben Westwood might be going on report. Well, he's brought the two captains. I've not seen anything what's going on in the tackle, OK? He's in the and go on report, OK? Yes, it's on report, and Stuart, that's all he can do, I think. That's all he can do. It does give Wigan a free interchange if they want to use it at this point. This that's is why people get annoyed. We'll go to the video referee to see how we should restart, whether the ball's bounced out and whether it's touched the player. We've got somebody who got a split under his eye, he's been knocked out, and we can't go and have a look at that. That's why people get annoyed. I'm with you, Brian, on that 100%. And as you say, Ben Westwood, we know he's a tough operator, we know he's a tough player. But look at that, that's the sort of reception he's going to get for the rest of the night from Wigan. And fully deserves, I might add. But he can accept it. But it was a cheap act. Cheap shot. Well, nobody's ever been put in the sin bin, nobody's ever been red carded in a grand final, and that's the way we would like it to stay, if at all possible. The kick from Libri is, is brilliant. It's right to the uh, goal line, and Charlie has to pick it up, and the chase isn't bad either, led by Hyam. And that gives you some indication what Tony Smith wants from his Warrington standoff, Lee Briers. We said before the game, Eddie, the team that controls the kicking game usually picks up the trophy after 80 minutes. This is Daryl Golding and uh, Charnley gives it to Matty Smith. Here comes Harrison Hansen straight into the chest of Paul Wood with Westwood and Hyam, though he's put down. 30 metres away from their own line, Mossop will drive it forward again for the Wigan Warriors. Three minutes gone in the grand final. And that was uh, Blake Green with the kick. Well, that'll be a great relief there for Sean Wayne to realise that uh, the man of the ability to put himself, I thought perhaps I might have kept him out of the action, but no, Blake Green stood up to the mark, got the kick away. Chase was good, defence equally as good. Well, I think that uh, Rod Studd can update us on uh, Blake Green's injury situation. Absolutely, yeah. Dr Chris Brooks, the Wigan and England doctor, is satisfied he's OK to carry on out there, but it's one to keep an eye on because it was a nasty blow, and there's no question that Warrington have dodged a bullet there because had Richard Silverwood spotted that in play, they could have been down to 12 men, certainly for 10 minutes and possibly for the rest of the match. But Dr Chris Brooks says that uh, he's OK, Blake Green, to continue out there for the moment. So, controversy early in the grand final, and you wonder what repercussions that might have on the England uh, hopes in the forthcoming World Cup. Of course, Ben Westwood named in the England squad. Brilliantly taken by Tompkins in the air, under pressure from Monaghan, by the way. And was Joe Monaghan, was he in touch with the player whilst he was airborne? It was a great take. 
I know he could claim that he was actually going for the ball, but he certainly made contact with Tompkins. Yes, I think it's uh, I think it's uh, an attempt here by Monaghan to simply go for the ball. That uh, just talking of England, I understand the the camp are uh, safely ensconced in South Africa. They're watching this evening uh, in their hotel. And we wish them all the very best for what's to come, and all the rest of the home nations, of course. And um, the England contingent will be joining them from Monday. Tompkins is one of them, he's given the ball to Golden. Golden's got shot, it's gone behind him. It's on, it's not down. Chris Riley got, got a hand to that. This will be head and feed to Wigan, but what about the extra man that's created by Sam Tompkins? Golden perhaps could have offloaded a split second earlier, and you'll see Riley gets the fingertips to it. Mike, that's almost a carbon copy of the second try that Wigan scored to win the grand final here three years ago. They have waves of attackers, they create the overlap in the space, and three years ago Wigan scored off that play. Not on this occasion, but they've shown again. People know coaches and opponent players know what they're going to do, but stopping it when it's done with that accuracy and precision is more difficult than it looks. Yeah, they've done well on that left-hand edge, haven't they? Brian Atkins and Chris Riley talking to each other and ultimately coming up with a good defensive play to stop a situation where you would see a try scored by the Wigan Warriors nine times out of ten. Wigan are very good at establishing when you're short. They were very short on that left side then. They tried to play earlier in the game down the right side and they umbrellaed the fence. They came up, Lee Breers and Joel Monaghan come up and shut the play off. That's what they're going to attempt to do in most of those plays. But if you're half a yard too short, too late, you're in trouble. Sean O'Loughlin. Disentangles himself from Lee Breers, plays the ball. This is Green here now. Is Dodson who will drive it in? And Dodson spins, but there are four Primrose yellow and blue jerseys to bring him down. And now it's with McAloran. This is Blake Green again. Green then to Matty Smith. Smith then to Tompkins. He finds Golding. And Golding is just held up short of the line on tackle number five. Tompkins spins it to Smith. He gets away from Hyam and he stabs the kick in and we've talked about the in-goal areas being very shallow and, uh, well, it didn't come up for Matty Smith on that occasion. No, a little bit too strong there, but the idea was there, but the building confidence for this Wigan outfit is that they are making inroads. They're getting over the advantage line with considerable ease. I thought that this Warrington uh, defence would be a lot stronger than that early in the case, but they're at sixes and sevens at the moment. Little things, Eddie, talks beforehand, and Ryan Giggs mentioned concentration and little moments. It was the bad pass that Matty Smith had to receive that meant his pre-rehearsed play, where he was going to kick it, all that went out the window, and he was rushed to play it. Every little pass counts. Pulsating opening, seven and a half minutes to the 2013 Grand Final, and here come Warrington now down that right-hand side, and this is Chris Briggs, and Blake Green's after him, and Bridges too strong. And in the end, it took Tompkins to bring Chris Bridge to the ground. You play it to Monaghan. Monaghan then finds Myler. Myler with a crossfield kick. And this will be picked up by Goulding. And he is rolled into the in-goal area by Atkins. Goal line dropout coming up. Well, that's an unusual option there. They didn't wait until the last. They went early on that piece. They were screaming for the link out on that left-hand side. But they opted for the kick. Goulding went down. Atkins certainly got him over the line. A very strange action. Well, Ryan, Ryan Atkins and, and Chris Riley didn't know that kick was on. They, didn't, they weren't aware of that at all because they were sitting back expecting it to go through the hands. The reason why he's made the kick, we see Chris Bridge taken by Sam Tompkins. That's the play. Tompkins, the fullback, is now rushing to get back. Because Sam Tompkins was out of place, Josh Charlie came all the way from the right wing in to mark the area underneath the post. Lee Breers, the smart player he is, exploited that with a kick out wide. Wigan were lucky enough to defend it in the end. It's smart and alert play from the Warrington team. What a dropout from Richards. That landed 35 metres away from the Warrington goal line. Yeah, they'll certainly miss him next season, won't they? That is for sure. He has been a real talisman for Cherry and White. Well, well he's, he's averaging 11 points per game as well in 223 appearances since 2006, Pat Richards. But here is Breers who finds Myler, and there's movement from uh, Griggs, and Great he's hauled tackle. down by Matty Smith. This now is Ratchford who's trying to get them a broken play. Ball in field to Ben Harrison. Harrison releases the pass back to Chris Hill. That's what they're good at, Warrington. They keep the ball alive and every opportunity. Hyam is waiting, clapping his hands, going on his own is Hyam. He's over the line. And he's held up, and they will bring this back, and the tackle count will continue. 
Now then, what type of kick will they utilise? Will it be a little grubber into the in-goal area? Remember, it is very short in-goal here at Old Trafford. It's in towards them, it's found, Monaghan, he's dropped it. Had the opportunity, Monaghan's claiming that it was uh, taken from him. Beautiful weighted kick, though, by Lee Breers. Stood his ground in Richards, but watch Joe Monaghan come through. He had the chance, and then it was stolen again. It was just pulled down with the right arm. Stuart, what would you give here? Knock on, or...? Well, that, that's obviously what they're looking for. The referee's nominated the 20-metre restart, so he thinks he's gone off last off... Um, he thinks he's gone last off Wigan, off uh, Warrington, sorry, but um, I think he's, he's ended up with uh, the knock-on from, from uh, Pat Richards, so we've, we've got the 20-metre restart. One, move! All the way, Mickey! Go, go so on. that's where they go from, 20 metres, and uh, Wigan with O'Loughlin. Eddie, isn't that a great match-up on that side? Pat Richards and Joel Monaghan, two, two of the best catchers in the business, two of the smartest players. Here comes that, that shift again. Warrington has got this covered. Warrington had plenty of numbers there. Yes, they did. Richards goes down. Tompkins at dummy half. This Ooh, is was, Liam Farrell. That was close to it, and that was a, should be a penalty. Stealing the ball, two on one. I must say, Wigan's tactics... A superb they don't want an arm wrestle they don't want to utilize it down the middle they are linking that's the fourth time that Sam Tompkins has tried to inject himself into the three-quarter line I'd go for two points yes they are doing just heard Pat Richards I, say that well I think he needs to settle down a bit I think you know, I think it's important to be first on the scoreboard for me it doesn't matter I think Sean Wayne's got that decision out there Pat Richards you back Pat Richards from, from anywhere around the halfway line he may not be necessarily accurate but he's going to kick the ball dead you're going to get another set of six it just depends on how it's going to be how it's going to be returned to you just having a look on the field and uh, just taking trying to take a check on uh, Blake Green I think he's uh, I think he's still out there, and I think he's just uh, trying to regain his, his thoughts. Well, he's been involved in two plays, Eddie, yes. in that last link, so therefore it, he seems A-OK. -okay. So Richards then with the opportunity to get the scoreboard ticking over here at Old Trafford. Only Jim Sullivan and Andy Farrell have scored more points for Wigan than this fellow, and there's two more to his total. We're going to have the lead by two points to nil. Do they deserve it? Yes, they do. It's a psychological lift as well for the Wigan outfit. The quality of this man is a hero, and why not? He's on his way back to Australia at the end of this game, and uh, you must say he's been a great servant, not only to Wigan, but certainly to the game itself. Just talking about how quick paced this game is, Pat Richards has effectively saved a try and four points on one end, Eddie, and less than 60 seconds later gets the first two points for the Warriors. And it's exactly the script that they wrote and played to perfectly at Wembley. They took the two points when they came on offer against Hull, and then they scored a couple of tries on the back of all of that. But they lead here by two points to nil, 12 minutes gone or thereabouts. We're a long way from uh, finalising who is going to be the champion of 2013. Wigan with a record 20 championships in all. They dominated the game in the winter. Eight titles, between, eight titles rather, between 87 and 96. And looking for their first Super League crown since 2010. That's a huge play for Mickey McAlorum. They were getting dominated at the bottom by the Warrington Wolves. And Mickey McAlorum has managed to get quick yards, a quick play of the ball, and that's the kick that comes in the back of it. Well done, McAlorum. And well done, Blake Green. Yeah, well hits his done, Blake Green. Tremendous kick, wasn't it? It's things like this that can turn any game, but especially a tight game like a grand final. And wonderful spin on it. Look at the offload. Tremendous stuff, isn't it? McAlorim just sniffing around, ducked underneath, got himself into the position. Is that poor defence, though, Mike? You've got three men on Sean O'Loughlin. The three of them you would expect to stop the ball. I think that will be um, that will be Tony Smith's reading of those events somehow. Watch the blind side on this move, Eddie. Will they do it? No, they're coming open. With Matty Smith and Harrison Hansen. And he goes straight at Myler. 
Grix is there though for good measure and there's a bit of help also from Ben Harrison. McAloran will sweep it into centre field and Matty Smith. Smith then to Blake Green again. Green to Tompkins. Tompkins trying to go through the game. Good tackle by Breers. Liam Farrell dummy half. Back it comes this time to Blake Green. Here goes Gil Dodson. The heavyweights move in. He rumbles it forward to within five metres of the line. Now it's McAloran. Liam Farrell trying to spin his way to the line. Again, Breers to the rescue. Real pressure now, will they kick early? No, they go to Smith, who goes to Tompkins, who finds Darrell Golding, and he'll try and slide the oh, kick in. wrong option. And that's brilliant by Riley. But wrong option there by Darrell Golding. Surely had the opportunity to offload. Why on earth would you want to put the kick through there? He had the winger watching it, screaming for it. I'm not sure what Darrell Golding was trying to do here. The ball went into one hand and seemed to... Seemed to at first glance go behind his... Well, yes, you're right, Steve. I was trying to... The simple ball to Josh Charlie might have been the better one. Give him well, a chance to try and finish. He's the most lethal finisher in Super League this year. Well, they've wasted an opportunity. Sean Wayne, the Wigan coach, he's furious. He is furious, not uh, just with the wasted opportunity, but also the fact that they've conceded the penalty. And here come Warrington now with Hill. You get on top of that, Eddie, and you look at it and you think to yourself, hang on, Daryl Goulding and Josh Charnley, they've been magical throughout the season because of his hands feeding the winger, and he tries to put a kick in. There's a problem now for, Warren, for Wigan because here come Warrington, and they've loaded up down the right-hand side, but they come in field to Harrison, and he's put to ground by Sean O'Lock. And there is Hyam, and now it's with Myler taking them on. Oh, he's clattered to the ground, is Richie Myler. What a tackle that was from Dodson. Here is Hyam, now it's with Breers. Breers changes the direction, goodness feet, slides the kick in. Tompkins to the rescue, the chance is gone. And that's why they paid a world record £700,000 for the fullback Sam Tompkins. His perfect positioning, anticipation of the kick, outstanding. Well, the opening quarter of an hour, all that we dreamt of and more. A rip-roaring grand final to the end of 2013 Super League season. And Liam Farrell taking it forward for the Wigan Warriors. He's played the ball there. Here now is Pat Richards. Well, that should be penalised. That facial... You've got to get a grip of this as uh, Richard Silverwood. Right down the throat of uh, Stefan Rax with that kick. A poor one as well. Yeah, but the great thing about this game, Eddie, for me, not that this will surprise anybody, is that both sides are actually attacking very, very well. And because they're attacking well, we sometimes question the defence of both sides. But they're actually coming up pretty well in that department also. But often you'll have a game where one team attacks and they look like they're going to score points, they look like they're going to dominate. But in this particular one, the two points is probably fair. It's probably a fair result at the moment. There's not a great deal between these sides. You're probably going to find that, I, I would have thought, for the 80 minutes. Well, significantly, and it might just be why uh, Sean Wayne has taken a gamble, if it be a gamble on Sean O'Loughlin, that uh, Wigan have not lost this year with Sam Tompkins and Sean O'Loughlin in the side. Again, Warrington up to go early, went on the fourth, didn't win with the last. Twinkle toes is on his way! Look at this. In the end, he is grounded by Simon Griggs, but the run was tremendous. Charnley now, Super League's top try scorer with 33 to his name so far over 40 in all games Harrison Hansen Wigan's longest serving player takes it forward plays the ball to Charlie Charlie then to Smith here now comes Ben Flower off the bench they've just gone into a safety first uh, option now of Wigan remember we were saying that they were linking out in the three quarters that's a nice kick it's an even better kick because Ratchford has to run it back from his own goal line and it was kicked on tackle number four and look at that defence from Wigan great work from Matty Smith there the chase is only as good as the kick and the kick is only as good as the chase that's what they keep saying hold it up for this Wigan now Warrington are in a little bit of a hole all that dominant possession that we thought that they would have certainly has not eventuated Mickey Hyam imploring his uh, teammates to come forward and take this. Westwood does do that. He drives it in. Hyam and Hill goes inside. McAloran, what a run from the prop forward. A good job that Liam Farrell got to his shirt tails. Up to halfway to the last. Breers with the kick. 
Straight Boy. into the arms of Pat Richards. Well, Libre has got a rocket from his coach at half-time last week in the qualifier. And he turned it round in the second 40. Boy, they were very slow there, Warrington in defence. They just got themselves back on that 10 metre when they had played the ball, Wigan. It's Flower here. Good Solid hit, hit from Westwood. Yeah. That's what he's so good at. That's why you can't understand what happened in the opening two minutes. He's a brilliant defender. He is absolutely brilliant. You're right, Eddie. It makes the, the earlier incidents hard to, hard to comprehend. I'll tell you what, this is when your lungs start burning around this point. This game has been extremely quick, and you might see a few gaps starting to appear until the players get their second win. We're going to reach the last tackle. It's with McAlorum who founds Matty Smith. Smith then drops it back to Tompkins. Oh, that was nicely intercepted by Myler. Here's a chance for Warrington. Myler goes to ground, though. Oh, he was screaming at Melvin. Yeah, that's going to be a penalty. The well, tackle had already been completed. Well, Sean Wayne does not agree, and Stuart Cummings, does he have a case? Well, as soon as he touches him, if he's on the ground, the tackle's completed. He can't then go and take him into touch. We saw earlier in the game where somebody pushed somebody back over the in-goal area. It was all one movement, but as soon as... He lands on top of him, he touches him while he's on the ground. That tackle is then complete, you can't then go and drag him. Charlie said I didn't yeah. land on him. He no, touched him. As soon, soon as he touches him, him, he's on the ground, you can't then drag him to the over the touchline. Well, Morley's out there. Adrian Morley's come on for Chris Hill, who just had that lung-bursting run to the halfway line. He plays it there to uh, Mickey Hyam. Cooper is on as well. Talking of Mickey Hyam, we have not seen him run from dummy half yet. And still haven't because this pass has found Myler. Myler then to Breers. Breers on the inside to Paul Wood. A very painful experience last year at the grand final. He lost a testicle, you might remember, in the immediate aftermath and made headlines all over the world with Paul Wood. Such a brave man. Hyams having a run this time! And Hyams is there. held up. Nearly got there. Must have been a ploy to make sure that they were doing that. Breers with the kick looking for Monaghan. Finishes it off yet again. And it's his 90th try for Warrington, is that? And this is his 87th appearance for Joel Monaghan. And he is a try scorer in the last six meetings with Wigan now as a result of that breathtaking try. Well, we saw how angry the Wigan coach Sean Wayne was on that last passage of play when Myler jumped onto the ball, got the penalty, but the most important factor, Wigan could and should have scored on two occasions down this right-hand side. Wasted opportunity, wrong option, now they're facing this kick to turn it to 6-2. And uh, Ratchford kicked a couple of these off the touchline last week in the qualifier against Huddersfield. And he's just missed with this one at Old Trafford. 
but courtesy of a Joel Monaghan special, Warrington are ahead 4-2. Well, there's betting slips up and down the country being safely preserved in wallets or on mantelpieces because this man was a heavy favourite to score first. The question I'll ask is, if Pat Richards can't defend this play, is there a winger in Super League that can against Joel Monaghan? Richards is outstanding in the, in the air against the high ball. I think Monaghan, shown on that occasion, he probably just edges it. Well, Brian, as a former winger, I'll throw it to you. What would you have done? Would you have, <laughs> would you have tapped this the ball there? This is out in the fall. Go on, Brian, you can answer the question. I, I'd have done very well to get my hands even, even close to it. <laughs> I've been happy enough with that, but this is, this is a huge play now, going back in the wide to Wolves' favour. Penalty well, on halfway. Pat Richards thumps it out on the full. I'm with you, Sean. Why on earth did he not just go to farm that away rather than try to accept it? It's too late now. Well, it's the more than too late now because Warrington now have a penalty on halfway because of a, a second error from Pat. Another man, of course, who is bidding farewell to Super League tonight. One of the biggest impacts that Warrington have had in the last two playoff games has that been provided by the subs. You see the stats here would give Warrington a, a narrow victory here at the moment, a narrow lead, I should say, minus the head as they are. But the impact of Carvel, Cooper, Michael Monaghan when he come on, that's now the next challenge that we're going to have to deal with. Interesting, Tony Smith has not thrown all three of the heavy guns on at once. But they've got Atkins out there. The heavy guns I'm talking about, of course, are Morley, Monaghan and Carvel. Morley's out there, Cooper's out there. They're the two just keeping the powder dry for the time being. Here is Cooper. And he goes down tackle number four. Warrington, though, threatening this line again. With Chris, it's Well, yes. Another the head from Tony Smith, as if he almost expected it. And Simon Griggs comes up with the try. Certainly could be. This is the error. Well and truly over the in goal area. Put them into it. Mickey Hyam, short pass. He's in. The defence just absolutely melted away. Great opportunity. And it just shows you how important it is to play the ball quickly. And for the hooker to just go bang, short pass, Griggs in. Big problem for Wigan, they know it. Two tries in three minutes, the biggest problem for them. And I guess if you look at the root cause of that, it's because they've been near their own try line. Any team inside their own 20 metre zones under pressure, they've put themselves under pressure by the penalties they've conceded, and Warrington have shown just how good they are at scoring when they get close into that part of the field. So, Stefan Ratchford then here to add another two puts to the Warrington total. Centre in last year's grand final, five from five in the playoff against Huddersfield last week. He'd already missed with his first. Five from five from this part of the field, Eddie, as well, about 10 to 20 metres in, much stronger on this side than he is over on the right wing. Well, let's see if that stat hells up here. And yes, it does. Sales between the uprights and Warrington hit double figures. 10-2 to the Wolves. An eight-point lead in any final, and he knows it as Tony Smith. He's got all that experience. He knows what it takes to coach a side to lift up that trophy. Beautiful quick running, and he came on at force, didn't he? Simon Griggs, and this is what it meant to the loyal fans. And boy, they have been loyal this season. He ran hard, Steve, and that's why he scored. When Sean O'Loughlin looks back at his involvement in that, I think he's guilty of looking at the play that he thought was going to happen behind Simon Griggs. He needed to get off the line, as did Matty Smith, and beat Simon Griggs with a bit of force. On that occasion, Griggs just ran harder and got himself a deserved four points. So, 10-2 Warrington, 26 minutes coming up on the clock. 17 all at the DW Stadium in February. In the return, Warrington ended Wigan's 13-match winning sequence in a classic encounter, 22-12. And here they come again with Chris Bridge. Westwood will fire it to Breers, and Breers will hoist it high into the Old Trafford sky. Oh, and that's bounced everywhere. Did that come off? That's gone everywhere. This is, and it's a zero tackle. It's a zero tackle. It's a free play. 
It came off Josh Charlie, I think. Yeah. Came off his head. Oh, this is real pressure. Warrington are sniffing the opportunity here. Isn't it amazing? We made them mention that Mickey Hyam for 25 minutes hadn't run from Damiar. Now he's doing it and creating all sorts of problems in this Wigan defence. And look where they are with three tackles remaining this set of six. Hyam gives it to Cooper. He'll take it forward, will Cooper? But only as far as those four. Breers is screaming for it. Will he get it? He's got it, Lee Breers. And he gets the short ball away. Westwood, who started with a black mark against him, and that is a golden star against him now for Benny Westwood and for Warrington, and they have suddenly taken a stranglehold on this match. It came off Charlie's head. Bang, shoulder perhaps, either way. Beautiful, look at this from Breers. It looked as though he was going to shake to kick. He attracted Blake Green. Come and get me. Ah, no, short. There's a hole. Nothing going to stop this fella. When he's in this mood, he was dead set. Got to get over for that try. But the four ah. tries from Benny Westwood in the first playoff match against the Leeds Rhinos, and he's underway here at Old Trafford tonight. But the brilliance of Lee Breers, just that little. Hesitation, put the doubt in the mind of the Wigan defence. Blake Green came at him, thought he was going to kick, didn't, offloaded. Westwood charges over, they're in control. So Ratchford, this time from the other side, similar sort of angle that he had on the left hand side of the field, now from the right. He doesn't like them from here, Eddie. <laughs> he doesn't. He won a grand final for Salford in 2008 with his teammate Richie Myler. And he's kicked that one. And the Salford team that day, of course, was coached by Sean McRae, who was with us. But Warrington is 16 2 up. They've absolutely blitzed this Wigan side. And they've got the ball where it needs to go. Why is Ben Westwood scored there? Because there's no Liam Farrell. He defends on the left hand side opposite Ben Westwood. He's found himself caught in field. And Ben Westwood was able to exploit that and get over for a deserved try. Great in attack, great in defence is that man. Oh, well, that's going to bounce all oh, over. Oh, yes. Well, that maybe was what they were looking for earlier on when they just hit it far too long. Well, you can see it at the back on the end of that very, very short in-goal area. It goes down very, very quickly. You can't afford to just leave it like that. Look how deep it goes. They were desperate for it. That, oh. that dead ball line is on the top of the hill. Yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty short, isn't it? It's difficult to defend it down there, but uh, it, this is the first time that we're going to touch the ball for probably about eight or nine minutes. It'll be interesting to see what sort of energy they've got now. Are they just going to recover with the football or will the field position make them alert and energise them and actually try to get some momentum back? I don't think they've got too much choice with 16 points to two. The game has not gone, certainly. You know, you're only a couple of scores away from, from, from getting back on, on level terms or close to it, but they need to get some football because Warrington looking particularly dangerous. That's an understatement after scoring those three tries. Yeah, three quick tries, but can Wigan respond here with Tompkins and Goulding? He shuffles it out wide this time to Charlie. And Charlie is bundling into touch. Has it come off bricks, though? He's probably thinking now, Charlie's thinking, should I have gone for the corner rather than the step? because there were four men waiting for him. And for the first time in this game, Darrell Goulding did get the right flick off. He knows the opportunity. That will certainly lift the spirits. Brian's right. It was thrown into Warrington play, but he didn't play it. It wasn't his effort. It wasn't his fault. So possession will be to the Warrington side. Well, that's what it should be. Well, it started out at a hectic pace, didn't it? And we often say in big games like this, you have to take your chances 
I'm afraid Wigan had those and did not take any. I just think Whiten's defence, if anything we've said all season, what did they learn from last year's example? The defense, they've made 95 tackles and just missed one in almost half an hour of play. That's a phenomenal record. And the commitment to defense is a commitment to excellence and perhaps one to success tonight. You're right, Phil. And the other thing, too, is that set was always going to be relatively easy to defend simply because you had plenty of energy. Because you've just had the ball for a lengthy period of time. You've got plenty of energy. You haven't been really put under pressure. You haven't had to defend your line. Well, double trouble for Wigan because Michael Monaghan and this fellow, Gareth Carvel, have just come onto the field. And they have been destructive during the playoff series when they have appeared off the bench. Yeah, throughout the game, and you can see straight away what the tactics will be. That's a swinging arm there from Plower. He knows it. He's given away 30, 40 metres. Can't afford to do that. Tony Smith with a sent to Michael Monaghan. As soon as you get your hands on that ball, mate, you go for it. This is Westwood. Well, that, was, a, that was Westwood with the drive and uh, O'Loughlin with the shoulder charge. Yeah. And another thing that's rather upset me in regards to, we knew that it was going to be a big gamble. Sean O'Loughlin could not be 100% fit. This is the swinging arm, no doubt about it. Does it come as a result of a quick play of the ball, though, Brian? Once they're rolling forward, people get the feet in their own place and commit those errors. You're always on the back foot then, aren't you? And you can see that the Warrington Wolves are doing that now. This is a crucial 10-minute period, not just for the... For, for the Wigan Warriors now, in this, this next 10 minutes, whether or not they can see it. For the whole game, Eddie, and who's going to lift the trophy could revolve around what happens in this next 10 minutes. Wigan have got to stem this flow of blood. Well, I believe when they came for their look round yesterday, uh, Warrington were absolutely full of themselves. They were confident supreme. And that's the reason why they're playing like this, and it's five to go. A six to go rather because it was touched there and here is Ratchford. Got to be a penalty, he it used is. it as a shepherd. It'll oh. come back though, it'll come back for the original offence, won't it? Yep, it was a free play, he knows it too, Tony Smith. It was worth the gamble. A Wigan hand just got to it. Oh, well, how on earth did he get that away? And you can see there that I think it's McAloran that got a fingertip to it. This is a free play, so he was worth it. Nice step. Ratchford, but he knew he'd use Westwood as a ploy and a dummy. And Sean O'Loughlin is querying with the referee, Richard Silverwood. That should have been a penalty to Wigan. But as we stated last week, Stuart, only in the case of foul play does the free play be nullified. That's right. So they come back to get the advantage. They've got complete advantage on that play apart from foul play. Okay, so Wigan have got to defend this set of six that's coming at them. And there's hand in to play the ball on Atkins, and here's another penalty to Wigan. I'd take the, to Warrington, rather. I'd, I'd take the two. Breers has got the two fingers up. He wants to get the nod from his coach, Tony Smith. Five penalties in a row for the Warrington Wolves. That's interesting, Mike. I think him and Myler felt as though they were going to kick at goal. This messy team to come from the sidelines, it's hard to tell from here. No, let's go for the kill. And that's what they're doing here with uh, Griggs with the head bandage now. Michael Monaghan pointing left, looking right, pointing right, looking left. He goes into centre field to Milan. Milan then finds Breers. <laughs> Breers just stutters and finds Bridge! And Bridge is in touch. Great That's work. Much better Wigan defence. Yeah. Thornley knew the target, hit the target, and got him over the sideline. But I must say, that Wigan are having all sorts of problems in deciding what Lee Breers is going to do. Again, they hesitated. Half anticipated the king, the kick. Boy, that was a great tackle. Had to be as well. well it was a good tackle, there. Was a terrific tackle. That's sometimes where you regret not taking the two points. But once you decide to roll the dice, you made the decision, you go for it. I think what, what frustrates coaches and, in fact, players is when you turn the ball over an early tackle count, you look back and think, oh, maybe we should have. But at 16 points to two, I'm not sure it was going to make a lot of difference. You know, we, we don't know what's going to happen for the next uh, 50 minutes or so. But at that scoreline, you can understand him wanting to try to score a try. Well, we know what's going to happen here because Carvel has just uh, caught Scott Taylor around the uh, the cheeks and uh, he's gone down. It's a penalty to Wigan. Well, at 34 minutes, the scoreline's accurately reflecting how this game's gone. You know, you look at the metres made by the side, the breaks, and the tackle success. Warrington are clearly ahead in all of those, <laughs> those, uh, those areas. But what Wigan have a character that sometimes fight 
the strongest when they're at the lowest here and they'll have to come up with something special. Short ball from Green found Farrell. Uh, Wigan would, well, they'd give the peer away if they could score here just before half time, and they might do because this is Flower. McAlora wants a quick play of the ball. He'll go left and he'll find O'Loughlin, who finds Tompkins. And he's grounded by Breers. Quick play of the ball to O'Loughlin. They're going down the left hand side. Farrell comes inside though now. Then gives it to Tompkins again. Tompkins short ball to Scott Taylor. And Taylor, almost on all fours, just crawls a little bit nearer the line. It's now with Matty Smith. And Smith attacking them. He finds Tompkins. Tompkins to Goulding. Goulding. Oh, sorry. Couldn't take another pass in. It wasn't the best from Goulding. And yet another chance has gone down this prolific right wing for Wigan all year. Unbelievable to think. You've just got to say to yourself, has he gone too early, Charlie, or is it a poor pass from Goulding? Give it straight to Charlie. Nobody's finished better in the league. Give it straight to him. He's taken too much out of that. He's given Chris Riley too much of an opportunity to defend. Give the man the ball earlier. And that's the third occasion that that combination, Goulding and Charlie, have had the opportunity to post tries. None of them has been forthcoming. Good boy, the coach is upset, isn't he? Yes. Oh my, is not, not he, impressed he, at the moment. Express some emotion then. Well, he's he's a man like that. He says he cannot keep things bottled up like others do. He shows his emotion. He wears his heart on his sleeve. He's Wigan through and through. Not only that, Eddie. He knows that they have blown the chances. Well, they've had three, haven't they? They've had yeah. three clear chances in this corner, and they have been so prolific, as I say, all the way through the year, until they come to this biggest night of the season. But they're up the team that's up against the team that finished second in the table, and that was a forward pass. And this a, is a chance. And a team, Eddie, that can defend. Warrington can defend their errors. They make plenty of errors in Super League, and it hasn't stopped them getting to second place. And they've able, they've been able to and good enough to defend when they've made mistakes. But that was sloppy there, uh, sloppy by uh, Stephen Ratchford. That is a poor play. The ball in the first instance that could have been picked up, but. To offload to Westwood, who we knew was at least half a meter in front. When you're leading 16 points to two, it's doing the basics that will keep you in that lead. Well, the door's slightly ajar. Can Wigan bang it down? Harrison Hansen. No, they can't. Be a or is it a penalty? Yeah. Yes, it is. Stripped out. No doubt about it. Well, Simon Griggs is in the walls, isn't he? Atkins, the man who got his fingertips yeah. to it and pulled it out. Yep. Now then, maybe one drive from this kick into the corner from Smith. There's the hand from Atkins. So here they come, Wigan, from that penalty with Ben Flower. This is where Tompkins has it come, second phase. Will they do another drive or will they try him early? Well, he's loitering with intent behind the play as O'Loughlin takes it forward. He's come on the right-hand side now as Tompkins. And Blake Green has been barking the instructions out. And here they come with Smith, and on the charge is Harrison Hansen. Good defence, though. Look how many yellow and blue shirts are there. That was clever, and he just took him over the try line. That means he has to go back now 10 metres. Tackled in the in-goal area, gives the Wolves another 10 metres space off their own line. Not many of them were onside, I must say, but here we go. Green gets it away to Farrell, he hangs on! He tries to spin out of the tackle. Westwood's all over him. This is O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin bullets it wide to Richards. Richards flings it. A speculator. Oh, it's been knocked forward, and it's going to be head and feet to Wigan. It is. Ratchford had the opportunity, and he lost it. He cannot believe it. Well, everything's just swinging against Warrington. They were totally in control of this game, and now that error, the error count is piling on for Warrington. Oh, and there's a... There's a Warrington player flat out. It's uh, it's Joel Monaghan, isn't it? He is absolutely yeah. out for the count. Yeah. He went in to make the tackle on Pat Richards. Or is, didn't it, he? is it Michael Monaghan? Oh, it's Joel, Eddie. The winger, isn't it? Man on man, he gets his yes. head to the side and he's. Oh, he's straight out. Is the hit? Yeah, it is Joel. There he is. Oh, sleep. He, he got he got all wrong, yeah. didn't he, in the tackle? He couldn't get his head out of the way, and that uh, that puts the strain on the neck. Well, we knew it was going to be rough and tough. Well, we it? certainly hope that's his brother speaking to the group of players now, Michael. We hope his, his younger brother, Joel, is OK. But he's showing the determination that Warrington show in defence. Make an error, you get up and you defend it. 
We'll see on this occasion, Pat Richards, Joel Monahan, hip right into the side of the head. Joel's out before he hits the ground. So he'll get the very best of medical attention now. They'll do their best to get him back on the field, get him playing. And then the similarities to Kevin Sinfield last year. Received a similar head injury. I'm not sure whether the game stopped for him. It, yes, it did, and it was a bit, it was a bit earlier in the piece, wasn't it, if I remember rightly? Well, Sean picked it up in his piece pre-game. The Kevin Sinfield got back off the ground and played a vital role in the great Leeds Rhinos win. We'd hope that Joel Monahan's got further part to play in this game. We're looking at the clock, 37 minutes, 33 seconds gone. Now, I think Wigan, a try now, Eddie, will be crucial in the context of this game. Interestingly, that Kevin Sinfield incident, it was a, it was a head clash with Joel's brother, Michael Monaghan. This doesn't look so good, does it? When you, when it you see a stretcher no. come out and you know that you know he was spark out, he was he was probably snoring before he's hit the ground. It, it was, it's 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 uh, recognising anyone in the crowd there. Uh, it's um, unlikely, I think, that a player would stay on the field. You know, in that situation. I know we saw Blake Green early. You know, we've got a bad knock. Saw what happened to his cheek, his eye, and think that one of the uh, great wingers watching on. Martin of fire behind him the uh, Wigan chairman Ian Lenahan and uh, this delay because uh, Joel Monaghan obviously has uh, has got a major problem he has not moved since his head came into collision with Pat Richards hip well it'll be a, a bit of shuffling around if Joel does have to leave the field on us on a stretcher and I'd say Simon Grix will be the part will have a part to play in that reshuffle you need somebody to fill in that right wing spot will be up against Pat Richards the options available are pushing probably Brian Atkins out onto the wing put Simon Griggs in the centers it's a little bit like Danny Badiris last week this isn't it he was he was spark out for a long time in Australia in the uh, the match that um, in the end finished his career he was retiring anyway at the end of it sad end to a magnificent career but the career of Joel Monaghan I, I doubt will end here tonight no, definitely at Old Trafford not. he's got plenty of great games left in him but I wonder if his grand final is coming to an end here because he, he looks as though he is out cold still you don't see many people stretched off on a spinal board with a neck brace on who return for the second half we just hope that he's okay it seems to be concussion more than spinal injury well, let's, hope right, let's have a look okay. at the try, Steve-O, here, because they came in quick succession for Warrington, didn't they? They certainly did. Richards took the option of trying to get the ball when he should have found it out. And then the short pass. I put Simon Ricks there, and then the short pass yet again, and Westwood didn't do it ever so well. Remember, if the ball carrying arm had hit the deck, they could have been, perhaps the tackle had been completed. He lifted it up, made sure that that was OK. And at 16-2, now this is a golden opportunity for Wigan. They have to be thinking about a set pattern move here. Because this could just rock the Warrington defence slightly. It could, and also when you think we're looking at the three Warrington try, we could easily have a look at the three or four uh, Wigan misses, couldn't we? I mean, th this could be three tries, four tries apiece, this. Yeah, the, the, the Dal Goulding, Josh Charnley combination, as uh, you've mentioned it so many times this year. Has been superb. I'm afraid it has just fallen down. You know, before the game, we saw an interview with Ryan Giggs, and he spoke about concentration. It isn't easy, and it's one of the things that perhaps supporters in the crowd, viewers at home, can't quite appreciate. You do have to relax here for a minute if you're Josh Chandler sat down, but then you need to be able to switch back on. They say test cricket, don't they? You don't stay focused when you're at the non striking end, but when you're facing the ball, you need to be ready for it. And when the player resumes, both of the attackers and the defenders here now need to have great concentration levels for remaining two and a half minutes of this game. I, I was going to say I know how Joel Monaghan feels, but I had the same incident happen to me ten years ago in a grand final year. I left the field on a stretcher, and it's a horrible feeling waking up on the sideline and trying to get your thoughts together and find out what's happening. Let me tell you, it's even worse when you lose. We lost to a brilliant Bradford Bulls side, deserved winners on the night. The only hope you would have for Joel Monaghan now is that when he does come round and he does wake up, He's lifting the trophy with his teammates. Otherwise, it'll be a rotten night for a great player. Well, we've had a break in play here of uh, over five minutes now. And it is obvious that uh, this is serious. Yeah. It's a, it, it's a sad sight. And, of course, he's in the far corner. And they're going to take him all the way across the field, naturally, to the dressing room, which is at the other end. Now, this is where Sean Wayne, the Wigan coach, will be saying, I don't care who... Warrington put out there in that wing position. We must test him early. 
What will like, they do? I mean, you well, say that Simon Briggs will put, come into it. What do you think they'll do, Sean? I think they'll put Chris Bridge on the wing and probably put Simon Briggs into the centre. Um, the other option is to use Stefan Ratchford there, but, you know, it, 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 I think Stefan Ratchford's that good at fullback. You don't want to keep moving people around. I think that's the most logical thing. You can't take Stefan Ratchford out of fullback. Who are you going to put in there? That's the question. There's nobody left. Stefan will have to, I would imagine, well, stay there. Well, Chris Bridge would have been the other one to go to fullback, but what I'm saying is that, that actually is not going to happen. That was probably plan B. It would make sense for me for Chris Bridge to go onto the wing, yeah. Simon Griggs into that right centre position. Obviously, one of the forwards are going to come on and go into the back row. Well, I think you might find that Mickey Hyam will come on, play the hooking role, and Michael Monaghan will slot into that second row position. They can't start play, by the way, in case you're wondering at home and why we are just chunnering on here. They can't start play until he's off the field, but they've taken a bit of a gamble here. They've actually allowed play to start now uh, with him just as we speak, crossing the whitewash up the other end. But here come Wigan, looking to cross the whitewash this end with Tompkins, and Gordon will score! Warrington in that long, long injury delay for Joel Monaghan. And as Darrell Golding repaid the faith there, has he repaid the faith? Because, my word, they have been a little bit uh, charitable, let's say that, he and John Lee. Well, they chose to go on the right side, and the combination, Riley, has come off the wing to take the centre position. They've switched it here. And as you can see, he just buffered to them off, both Ratchford and Riley. And boy, if there's ever a player out in the grand final that said, I need a try to just eliminate the errors that I've come up with. And that will lift Sean Wayne. He knows how vital it is to have scored points. And can this kick from Blake Green uh, sorry, from uh, Pat Richards. It's a vital two points, this. Yes, you it is. You wouldn't bet against him, Eddie. Yes, it would only be uh, an eight-point ball game. Oh, hello, he's missed it. Well, there you go. 16-6, it's a ten-point ball game. And it came from accurate passing, Eddie, and determined running. Ben Flower and Harrison Hansen, watch their contributions as they steam forward. All holding up the Warrington defenders and gave Goulding the chance to have a player outside him in Josh Charnley. On this occasion, tucked the ball under his arm and crashed over for four points. It is a crucial score. The extra two would have been good for Wigan, but that try will give them confidence as they walk back into the change rooms, you would imagine, at 16 points to six steps. Well, providing they don't concede anything else here, and uh, providing, of course, well, if they scored at the other end, it would give them an even bigger lift, but uh, providing they don't concede anything here, uh, Wigan, it will give them a psychological lift, because they've been outplayed for uh, about the last 25 minutes. Well, Stefan Ratchet has made sure that uh, it wasn't going to go out on the full. And, and here they, comes Blake Green again. They should feel pretty confident now, Warrington, that uh, they can last out these uh, vital few seconds. Ratchford has dropped very, very deep indeed, anticipating maybe a kick in the final seconds. Well, Lachlan takes it forward, and, uh, well, we have five seconds of this first half remaining. And surely Wigan will just play out time. No, they won't. They'll go for a chip over the top. It's stranded in the arms of Morley. There will be the tackle. That will be the first half. And uh, Warrington will turn round with the scoreline in their advantage. But the fact that uh, Joel Monaghan, we suspect, although we're not medicals, we suspect he will play no further part in this grand final. It is all to play for in this second half. And uh, the last 40 minutes in Super League that we will see Sam Tompkins and Adrian Morley, amongst others. Here we go, 40 minutes, and the season's on the line. And it certainly is for Wigan. 
they realise, all the players and their coach Sean Wayne realise that they have got to get a try pretty early in this uh, second stanza. They have the ability, there's no doubt about that. But they have failed to take their opportunities. Three wonderful chances in that first 40 minutes. Just frittered away the Goulding Charnley combination. Certainly not on song tonight. And uh, we have to bow to the knowledge up here on the gantry because uh, Chris Bridges operating on the wing in place of Joel Monaghan. He is standing out wide here and over on the other side. Standing out wide is uh, Chris Riley. And Ratchford is very deep in defence for this kick from Blake Green, which is a great kick and will bounce its way into Ratchford's arms. And so, Ratchford is uh, grounded by Taylor and McAlorum. Right, wonder what was said at half-time. Rock Studd. Well, first, Eddie, let me tell you that Joel Monaghan is on his way to hospital. He's obviously concussed, but he is conscious, but uh, he's still, his neck is still in a brace and he's still on a stretcher and he's been taken away in an ambulance, so we wish him well, obviously. So Tony Smith having to switch. Chris Bridge goes on to the right wing and Simon Bricks will go into the centre. Mike Cooper into the second row. Apart from that, Tony Smith pretty happy with what he's seen, pretty happy with his side's defence. For Sean Wayne, the problem is on the scoreboard because only two teams have come from behind in a grand final to win in 2003, Bradford and St Helens in 1999, and both those teams had single-digit deficits to overcome. Sean Wayne calling for his team to start winning the ruck, Eddie. Well, meanwhile, the kick from Breers will take uh, Warrington deep into Wigan territory with this scrum head and feed to the Warriors. Remember, Wigan after the double and Warrington after their first title in 58 years and that man on your screen Lee Breers realizes that uh, the kicking game will be important when at a 10-point lead Sam Tompkins very well aware that they have to strike soon not only on the scoreboard but to, to lift their confidence remember three tries in the first half in the space of six minutes completely blitzed this Wigan outfit. Warrington too quick to break from the scrum. Penalty at the scrum to Wigan. Yeah, very rare you see that. Well spotted by the official, Richard Silverwood. This is his view of it for hers. Well, they're trapped it in the second row and the ball is now until it comes out from behind the second row. Well, smart play by Wigan. It is smart play because they begin this set of six, five metres inside Warrington territory. And Taylor. Gives it to Green, gives it to Tompkins, he gets it wide, and this is Thornley. He scored the try, of course, at uh, Wembley that set Wigan on their way to victory. Richards passes the ball in field to O'Loughlin. Here is Smith. Smith then finds Sam Tompkins. Tompkins goes to Goulding again, and Goulding has been having a good job on, done on him by the Warrington defence so far. Matty Smith once more. Just delayed the pass to Green. He finds Farrell who spins out of trouble. Breers went on, went on his back. Oh. Breers to the ground. It's a knock on. He had Sean O'Loughlin and he knew it. Farrell. He's spinning round. He could see O'Loughlin coming in. He just could not control it. What a let off for Warrington. Breers one on one. Tried to drag the ball away. Griggs came to the rescue. And he could see a lock in there, but could not control it. Defence like that just might give Warrington the championship. They've uh, won three championships in all in their history. And a swinging arm in the tackle by Wigan gives Warrington a penalty now. Three championships in an eight-season spell for Warrington. 1948, 1955 and they won in consecutive years actually 54 and 55 well, and they won the double in 1954 so Warrington trying to stop Wigan emulating them here tonight silly play by the Wigan skipper Sean O'Loughlin he made the mark but it also will give away about 35 40 meters downfield it's not what they needed they really needed to camp down try to force the error get possession as they keep mentioning Lee Breers He'll be a real thorn in the Wigan side now with the kicking game. It's also a reward for Simon Grix's determined run. It's already got him a try in this game. And if you run at the defensive line like that, you're a chance of either going through or being awarded a penalty for a high shot because they cannot control you in defence. Adrian Morley wants to leave Warrington for Salford with a, a grand finals winner's ring in his pocket. Michael Monaghan to Gareth Carvel. 
Carvel, another one who's heading to Pastures New, the Bradford Bulls for uh, Carvel next year. Michael Monaghan again gives it then to Briers. Here fires the pass to Myler. Myler slips the kick in looking for Ryan Atkins. That's a great tackle by Tompkins. That's a try saver. And Tompkins again harassing Ratchford. Little kick through by Myler. Oh, and Farrell does really well. Well, he does well there. Incredible sidestepping there. It looked for all the world that he was going to touch the whitewash. He didn't. He was on the precipice, wasn't it? Unbelievable. It was a good little kick, wasn't it, by uh, Richie Milet. Farrell's twinkle toes get him out of trouble, but they're still only 15 metres away from their own goal line. O'Loughlin. The Wigan skipper, so important to the Warriors that he came back tonight. His 350th career appearance on the biggest stage. You have what a, a sense. great set of six defensively, though, yeah, this is. You have a sense, don't you, that the next try in this game will be the crucial one. Though. When you watch this game, there's a chance, though. It's landed back for Wigan, and Smith kicks it again. And they've got six to go, and Charlie makes some progress. Well, they charge the ball down more than any other team, don't they, Warrington? They restricted the yards, they got a slow play of the ball, forced it on Wigan, and absolutely do what they do best, jumped up and put pressure on the kicker. Defensively, that was an excellent set from the Warrington Wolves. Yeah, good work as well, wasn't it, by Michael Monaghan? But, it was, but he's now been caught offside, he didn't make it back to ten. Well, we... And O'Loughlin, look at him, he's, he's, he's struggling. He's feeling the pinch, he's yeah. limping. We knew he would, Eddie, especially with the pace of this game and it's been in this final. And here they come now, the Warriors with Ben Flower. That's the first tackle, they're on the Warrington 20-metre line. O'Loughlin, defying the pain, gets a short ball away to Mossop. Mossop goes down, plays the ball to McIlorum. Here is Tompkins, good tackle by Breers. Picked him out, he's done that all the game. Every time Tompkins has come into the play, he's had it measured. Matty Smith, Harrison Hansen now. Can't get past Michael Monaghan, this is good defence from Warrington. Can they hang on for another two? McIlorum! He got a place in the 2010 Grand Final win ahead of Mark Riddell. He is here today on his own merits, there's no doubt about that. And Michael McIlorum, two cup wins, now a second Grand Final winner's ring. He hopes so. Tremendous blow to bring the try at the vital moment. Through the dummy, and boy, they took it. That was very poor first and second marking. In fact, you could see there that Michael Monaghan, he was on his own. They couldn't get the second man through. When he threw the dummy, he put Wigan back into this game, and he knows it as well. Crafty work from the hooker. And suddenly the Wigan crowd come alive. They were very quiet in that first half. Suddenly they're on their feet, and they are dreaming the double dream. You spoke before, and Eddie, about being isolated from the sound. When you take these headphones off and listen to the roar from all these spectators that are crammed in here, it's an unbelievable atmosphere. Richards with this kick to get it back to 16-12. Academic for a man like Pat Richards, 16-12 it is. Will Warrington hang on? That is a big question. We doubted the fact that quite a few of they've got eight players and can they last out to the end of the 80 minutes? Doesn't the base of the ball, though, determine so much in sport? You forget that boat is another way, Eddie, and it's a Warrington try and perhaps the grand final for them. But Michael McClellan scored what looks at this level too easy a try. That soft defence from Warrington, they'll have to improve, or well, this is all over. Well, Warrington lost Joel Monaghan, Wigan. I think have just lost Sean O'Loughlin. He has gone off the field. He's just been replaced, the skipper. And that's a smart move because he's going to be just a passenger out there, Eddie. We saw on the restart he was being utilised as a prop forward. He was taking the ball up and he knows he's struggling. 
Well, you know, Steve, it might also be give him 15 minutes, see how the injury is, and bring him back on to close the game off if they're in a winning position, or get them back into the game if they're behind in the last 15 or so minutes. We're going to come in here with Tompkins. He's grounded by Myler and Atkins. That's the last tackle, though. They're on halfway, so the kick from Smith has to be good, and it goes up and high. And who wants it? Oh, it bounces off of Warrington back. Still the last. Here is Farrell. This is Thornley. And Thornley cuts inside. Gets the pass away. Oh, 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 oh. Important ankle tap by Michael McAlorum. Oh, and Sean O'Loughlin breathes deeply on the side. Well, that was a huge gift. And oh, that was a good take as well under pressure. Not the best pass at all over the shop at the moment. Well, they kept it alive, did Wigan, but it landed into the hands of a Warrington player. Look, I know that uh, Super League gives us some fantastic games during the course of the season, but don't you just love grand final night? Rod Stubb has got some news for us, I believe. Yes, Sean Another Lockett off, as you can see, he's on the inside back of Stefan Ratchford is the latest player to go down injured, and he looks in a bad way too. I think they're all off an injury, a combination, Eddie, of the original Achilles problem, and then a simple lack of match fitness. Remember the cup final, the only game he's played in the last two months, but he's on that bike, and he obviously hopes to get back on there. I'll give you a bulletin on Stefan Ratchford in a minute too, Eddie, he's down here. Yes, he is. Now... Is that one of, they call them cannonball, don't they, Stuart? Is that one of those, cannonball tackle? Well, it, it look, certainly looks like he's gone in towards the joint. Um, so, they'll be looking at where the first impact is. And if it sort of hits in a different area than straight at the joint, he'll probably get away with it. But if it's gone straight to the knee or the ankle, then they'll be looking to penalise this. I think if you see on the replay, it, it more or less goes into the hip rather than the leg. And that'll probably save him. I think the problem they'll have, Steve-O, is that Harrison Hansen is to a great degree out of control as he flies in here. He rockets himself in there. When Lee Mossop bends Stefan Ratchford back, Harrison Hansen is out of control, I believe, of his body position and the speed at which he's just gone into that tackle. And that makes it a very, very dangerous play. And I don't think, I don't think Tony Smith was too impressed with it. No, and I'll tell you something, it looks like Ratchford, Ratchford is coming off. Yes, he's coming straight off the field. He's hopping his way off as Breas hoists a high kick. Oh, this is dangerous for Charnley. This is... Oh, he's oh, taken penalty. out. He's taken out there by Ryan Atkins. Silly play by Atkins. Didn't need that. That's a big, another big blow for Warrington Ratchford going off. Monaghan on his way to hospital. Yeah, what on earth is Atkins thinking about here? Just takes Charnley out completely. Well, Phil was talking to me at half-time about the the adrenaline that pumps through the veins and it's easy for us up here to sit in judgment well, they're getting it all wrong aren't they Warren? it's been a brilliant second half so far for Wigan their energy levels are high the body language looks good and Wigan now have Chris Riley at fullback looking at these repeated waves of Wigan attack that's attacking both to the left and the right it's been a great battle hasn't it between that fellow Sam Tompkins and Lee Breers Tompkins been running at him all night. Breers has been round his ankles all night. It's getting a bit tasty out there. Well, it is. Eddie. It is. Eddie, it looks to me like Mickey Hyam may have gone into the right centre. I think Simon Grix has gone across to the left centre. Ryan Atkins has gone to the wing and Chris Riley gone to fullback. So they've had to make some monumental changes here at Warrington. Huge changes. That's good work by McAlorn. Meanwhile, to Blake Green. And Blake Green gets the ball away under pressure to Liam Farrell. This is the last for Wigan. What a rip roarer of a grand final these two are serving up. Tompkins, wide it goes to Hansen. Hansen then to Goulding. Goulding slides to kick down the line for Charlie! kicks the goal, Wigan will hit the front. Tremendous play by Daryl Golding. We criticised them. Three opportunities in the first half, and they did not get it right. He's onside as far as I'm concerned. He tried this in the first half, he made a real mess of it. That's yeah. the question he asked, absolutely right, Steve-O. Was he onside? We have the expert with us, Stuart Cummings. Is he onside or offside? Well, yes, I've both feet behind the ball, and I think that shot there showed that he did. He's looking at the grounding, and there's nothing wrong with that. This will be a try to win.
Well, now that he's looked at the grounding, I think you're probably right, Stu. Chan Lee, the leading try scorer in Super League, has just registered. We think it's 34th try of the campaign. He has. We're going to fought their way back into the match that was slipping away from them. Two crucial injury blows for Warrington, Monaghan and Ratchford. And now it's level and the kick to come. Isn't it amazing? They have had a shocking first 40 minutes. And Goulding raises the arm as soon as he knew that Charlie has grabbed this ball. And he knows he's going to plunk it right the way down. Atkins tried to stop him rather than go for the ball. And that is the result. And Wigan take the lead yet again. Well, they will if this kick goes over. You would bank your mortgage, Steve-O, even yours, on this. Straight between the uprights. Well, for years we might be talking about one of the most significant events in Grand Final history, and that's Harrison Hansen's contact with Stefan Ratchford. As Sean McRae explained, it meant they've had wholesale changes across the back. And Daryl Goulding, a man who was critical over the first half for some of his plays, has pulled off a majestic kick just far enough in front of the defending fullback for just Charlie to be able to scoop it up and bring it underneath the post for four points, converted to get it six. Eddie, that's a huge play when Harrison had contact with Stefan Ratchford. He's had to leave the field, but some great wing and attacking play has brought them right back in front of this game. He might be feeling a little bit more relaxed now for Warrington. I'm just wondering who's going to kick the goals. Lee Breers, of course, has kicked them for years and years and years. Ben Westwood is an option ben as Westwood well. could kick, and uh, Chris Bridge can kick, but uh, I just wonder whether it will go to, uh, to Lee Breers, the main job. We'll see if they get the chance to kick. Well, they're running out of energy as well, Warrington. You just get that impression now, but there's, uh, remember, Warrington scored three tries in six minutes. It looks like we're going to try and emulate that. We're going to have twice as much of the ball since the after the second half, Eddie, and that's obviously why Warrington look a little flat at the moment. I guess that's going to even up. Warrington have to hang in there long enough until the ball comes back their way, because at the moment, Wigan, as the stats are showing, are narrowly in front with that swing of possession again. When it comes and Warrington get the hands on the ball, that's the test of who will win this match. Well, they've now come up with another change, Eddie. Lee Breers has gone to fullback as we get another penalty here to the Wigan Warriors. Not standing square of the play of the ball, Warrington. This quick play of the ball caught them. You can see Carvel, he's out of out of uh, alignment and gets involved. And that shows fatigue is beginning to set in to this Warrington outfit. Warrington have won four in a row, just one defeat in the last 14. Their last game on neutral territory. They lost to Hull in the cup semi-final. They're on neutral ground here, and at the moment they're trailing by two points. And Green, who was involved in the controversial moment in the second minute, will get up and play the ball to McAloran. He will find Matty Smith. Matty Smith to Lee Mossop. Motti, uh, Mossop goes down in the challenge. That's McAloran again. And here's Matty Smith. This now is Tonkins. Oh! oh and final on a plate for Charlie. That could have finished the game, and he knows it. To be fair to Charlie, he was dipping. Sean Wayne can't believe it. Watch the final pass here. He's dipping forward and just going down. Sam Tonkins. Look at it how he's just going down. It's enough. He should have got it. You can see there that Chris Riley, he'd gone inside. He was a clear run, and he cannot believe it, John Wayne. Justice might have been seen to be done then, because that looked a forward pass. Possibly was, Eddie, possibly forward. The thing, interesting uh, thing for me... Has he ruled forward pass, Stuart? Sorry, Sean. No, no, he's given the knock on and gone with the scrum. OK. No, the point I was going to make was that um, uh, Josh Charnley tended to look up as the ball was dipping. I think he keeps his eyes on the ball, he catches that. It was a tough ball, it was dipping, but I'll tell you what, international winger, that's catchable, Brian Carney. No, I, I, I thought the same thing. You're right, Steve, oh, it did dip a little, but that's one of the greatest finishers that we've had this season, and we'll be expecting to star in the World Cup for England, and no doubt he will do, and will do his best to it. Josh, Josh will look back at that and think, yeah, that's a ball I should have caught, four points I should have taken. Hill will take it forward for Warrington. They haven't given up the ghost yet. Don't worry about that. Oh, there's still plenty in the fire, that is for sure. But uh, they've got that poor field position in the second half. Not much possession either. They've got to make sure that the kick and chase is going to be good. 
Got to be careful, Wigan. Don't give away a silly penalty. This is the last. Breers will pump the ball right down the middle of the field. And underneath it is Tompkins. That's one. No. Charnley goes down on the first tackle. 25 metres away from their own line. Richards will take it forward. Big problems for the second row. It looks like Ben Westwood is running out of energy. They just sent out the uh, the trainer out there trying to just get him back into get a little bit of oxygen in the lungs. Matty Smith pops it up. Here comes Dom Crosby. Oh, Lachlan is uh, is waiting to return. The skipper Smith gets the short pass away to Harrison Hansen. He's dumped down on the last. This is Tompkins going the short side. All along the deck on the bounce from Matty Smith, and he finds touch. I'll, I'll tell you what, that's a great kick. He's had to dig that into the ground under pressure. That's a great kick. It was that Richie Myler dived out of his feet, done everything you could to try and put him off or block the ball down. And he's managed to get the ball out. Well, here we go. The skipper's going to come back on. As we predicted, he'll probably be on the field to try and take Wigan home in the last 20 or so minutes. You know, it's the perfect scenario, the greatest way that the season could end here, Eddie. We get to the final quarter of a game, one team have a two-point advantage, they've actually lost a few players with injury, it looks as though they've been under pressure here now since start the second half. What sort of fighting spirit have they got? Can they get themselves back in front and back into this contest? It's a mirror of the two games we have seen this season between these two. One of them went down to the last seven minutes of the contest, Warrington won it, the other was drawn. Here we go in the last, or coming to the last quarter, it's a two-point advantage to the Wigan Warriors. At the moment, they're on course for an historic double. Yeah, and Wigan are feeling confident there, Eddie. Yeah, they know their defence is solid. Warrington realise they can't get in the opposition half. Their last win against Warrington, Wigan, July 2011, a Challenge Cup quarter-final. 44-24, that was away from home. They're away from home tonight, they're leading after 59 minutes of the grand final. Michael Monaghan, but this team in Primrose, yellow and blue, won't give up. Oh, but Myler has lost the ball in the ferocity of the challenge from Michael McAlorum. It was a wonderful tackle by the hooker, McAlorum. They, they now have to change the way they're going to attack Warrington because, with the utmost respect to Lee Breers, he doesn't have the speed anymore to get in position for the plays, like a Stefan Ratchford did. Or nor does he have the nous at fullback like Brett Hodgson did. Speaking of now, so Sean O'Loughlin back on the field. And Sam, Tompkins. This kid run, Sam Tompkins. Now, there's a difference in terms of pace. The Warrington will have to adjust their, their attack to suit the players that they have. Thornley tries to go inside Griggs. He hangs on under pressure from Mickey Hyam. Farrell waits. They're coming down the short side with O'Loughlin. Where's he getting this energy from? The skipper who is back for the Wigan Warriors. Here is Blake Green, he gets the kick in under pressure, there's three on to one here. Tompkins has claimed it! Can't get it down though. Boy, that was great work. That could have just sealed it. It's turnover. But look where they're going to have to play the ball. It was a wonderful kick. Tompkins takes it out of Atkins' uh, hands. But Riley and Myler, they say, you're not going to get that ball down. You know what those pictures say to me? That's a team working for each other. Sam Tompkins got a great grip on that. Ryan Atkins thought he had it. Everybody's come in to assist. Nobody left it to Ryan Atkins on his own. Myler came in, Riley came in. Brilliant defence. Keep that up, you still got a chance in this game. A big chance. We're in the last quarter of the grand final. We're in the last 20 minutes of the 2013 Super League season. Who's going to go home with the biggest prize in the game? At the moment, Wigan have got their noses in front. They've won only two of the last nine weekly round games, none of the last four, yet they've won in playoff football when it has mattered most, and they're winning tonight. And again, the biggest problem, can they get through this Wigan defence because they are all over them? Oh, a little juggle from uh, Paul Ward up against his hometown club tonight, of course, is Paul Ward. We're going to ball and bread, but Warrington through and through. Here goes Hyam. Good run by Hyam as well. Hyam wants to play it quickly. Got to get a high one up. Oh, he's gone for the corner instead. Breers has gone for the corner. 
and uh, will hunt now the Wigan mistake. Yeah, his playing percentages now is Lee Breers. He realises that their field position has been poor in the second half. He knows he's got to keep Wigan down. This is so important. This is probably, in defence, the most valuable part of the second half as far as Warrington's concerned. They must keep Wigan way down in their own half. What have they got in the tank as well? With all those changes, it means they're down two interchange people. There's a lot of pressure on some of those big forwards. They've got to play a lot longer minutes. There's people playing out of position. You've got to put all that to the back of your mind. I think 18 minutes to go in the biggest Super League game of the year. We're two points behind and we've got to play like we're fresh and we're ready to go. And we've got a chance, a great chance again, I'll say it, of lifting the trophy. They're going to try and keep Wigan penned down here in this half of the field but Farrell will try and take them forward and almost does to the 50 uh, 30 meter mark but he is uh, pulled down just short of it Thornley dummy half Blake Green here comes Sean O'Loughlin they've got what a constant what a the captain's three. knock by yeah, the way it certainly is as I say they've had to utilize him as a, just as a prop forward he's normally the man that likes to uh, offload there's an off road to McAloran there is Blake Green here comes Matty Smith again bang down he goes he's lost it and he's lost the ball there's a penalty here, Tompkins has asked for the penalty, he's got it. Tompkins has asked for the penalty, and he has got it. Ball steal is the verdict of Richard Silverwood. Stuart Cummings, correct? Well, that's come from uh, Robert Hicks at the side, he's seen it. I mean, there's pressure on the ball, whether it's actually being stolen, uh, you know, he's debatable, really. Yeah, Cooper, Cooper drags that out. Looks like he did, didn't yeah. he? What's Cooper's uh, right hand? That's got it through. You see those pictures, Stuart, there's no argument, really. That's right, on that one, he's, he's definitely played at the ball and the ball's come out. That makes it 4-1 now, the penalty count. If you think about Wigan, what has helped them to get out to their own half and get some points on the board with the penalties that got them downfield. Why did now have to defend? You know, the coach and owner of American football team used to say to his team, listen, just win. And that's, I guess, the only advice Tony Smith can send out there now. They're down on energy, they're down on troops, the backs are against the wall, but they've got to find a way of winning this game. Well, they've got to start being a little bit more adventurous in it, but first of all, they've got to get that, that ball in their hands, and they can't do it. They can't at the moment, because Thornley has it here, and that's tackle number three, Liam Farrell. Farrell gives it to Blake Green, he then pops it up to Lee Mossop, another who is heading out of Super League this year. Such emotion in these two sides. McAlorham has a scamper, he finds Blake Green. Green! Well, he was laid out, Eddie, you said, after two minutes. He's dragged himself up off the canvas, and he's playing a huge part in his team's surge board in this game and in the context of this, context of this match, Steve-O. You've got to be right, and mainly due to the fact that the combination of Blake Green and Matty Smith was a little bit off, a little bit off colour in that first half. This is a steal. Cooper gives them 30, 40 metres up field. And the short pass, look at this, throw the dummy. That's a tiring Warrington defence. Morley couldn't get anywhere near. They are tiring badly at the Wolves. And the Warriors are taking it to them. And this is what it means to be a coach of a successful side. The Challenge Cup already on the sideboard. And I think deep down, they'll be kissing each other, celebrating that maybe the grand final trophy. They'll make a place in the boardroom, in the trophy cabinet. Well, they're going to have to extend it because they've got the FA Cup, they've got the Challenge Cup, and now they're going to have the Super League trophy. They've also got the old First Division trophy, I think, which was retired into Wigan's possession. Richards has added the extras. You know, when you look again at that ball steal from Mike Cooper, it didn't look conclusive, that angle. It did the other angle. Well, we see them given, Eddie but it takes no consideration for the actions of Matty Smith, and that would be my problem with it. Do we see Blake Green do what he does as a six? Run first, that's your first option. That should be the first thing you think about. Run the ball first, a little child enjoying it, loving it, and why wouldn't they? What an atmosphere for them. But I'll tell you what, Eddie, I wouldn't give this trophy to Wigan just yet. This oh. Warrington Wolves side can score from anywhere in the field. I know they're down troops, I know they're tired, but beware, they can score. What a year for Blake Green.
his first year at Wigan and at the moment he's on course for the two biggest prizes in the game. And fully deserved as well because the two half-backs have played well, so has this fellow Sam Tompkins. And they said, didn't they, that without Lulawai and Finch, Wigan wouldn't be as good. Yeah, there was a, a big doubt about it, saying that uh, Green and Smith, no, no way, won't win a thing. Well, the silverware is facing you. Boy, yes. what a fight back. 16-6 down, Wigan, half-time. They weren't taking their chances. It looked as though Warrington was in full control. You've got a point at the two injuries. You've got a point at the yeah, John Mott yeah. injury, and you've got a point at the Stefan Ratchford incident. People yeah. ask you for your predictions in the week, don't they, steve -O? The week of the grand final, who do you think is going to win? Well, you've got no idea how the game's really going to unfold. No idea that John Bonham's going to be lost like that. No idea that Stefan Ratchford's going to be lost in certain circumstances. And that's the joy of it. Coming into this game, you just don't know what's going to happen. And the book he's made, Warrington, the marginal favourites, and that's why they are millionaires, and that's why we all work for a living. Because nobody can predict things like this. Warrington, do they have a comeback in them? They can't get out of their own half, any. It has been a wonderful display by Wigan in this second stanza. They've controlled it. The kick and chase game has been good. Their younger forwards have had more energy. Well, they've, think, got a, they've got over the advantage line, Warrington haven't. Ooh, oh, it's got to be a Well, it was a little bit high, to say the least, from uh, Gil Dodson, this. Oh, you, well, don't, you don't need to do that. 24-16, you're in the lead. Does well, he, he actually make contact with the head? He went for the ball. He, slapped, the he went he to slap the, the ball. ball. So what he said to the referee, and watching the pictures, I believe that. He's made a slap, he's made a play for the ball, and Michael Monaghan, which is two players, there's always two involved in it, takes two to tango. Michael Monaghan's actions has meant that Gil Dutton and hit him high. Absolutely correct decision, penalties the Warrington Wolves. Well, this is Warrington's moment now. They've not had the ball for, it seems like, ages. They've got it now with Myler, and they've got it here with Westwood. It's a penalty, though, for crossing, obstruction. This contentious rule that we've talked about all year plays a part in the grand final. Well, he runs behind his own his own man, and, you know, Wood yeah, is in the defensive stopped. line. But he's um, stopped, he hasn't gone through to make it into a, a shepherd. He's run behind his own man, that's that's all it needs to take, it needs to bring the penalty on. Wood stopped there, he runs behind. He's got to pass it before he goes behind him. I think they've got that wrong, I, I, I think... And he, I think the, the coach is fully aware of that. I mean, he didn't go through the line, he stopped. Was there a defender impeded, is the question. That no, I, I not whatsoever. Not, no. You've got to write the rules committee, because those are the current rules, and it is a penalty, so any chance of a fight back? Well, he doesn't believe it. Well, he was in the meeting that agreed it, so, you know, perhaps he needs to look back a few years. Fair enough. If you put your hand up and you vote for something, that's it. Here is Harrison Hansen. 11 minutes to go. Can Warrington come up off the canvas? Can Wigan win the double? Here is Farrell, he's broken through, he's got Tompkins! And Tompkins can't get away, but he gets the ball away brilliantly to Smith. This is Dodson, he's on the ground, gives it to McAlor, and he gives it to Smith, back this is only six. six to go. Yeah, back to six. Sheer desperation, McAlorum, making sure that they just settle things down. That's crafty work from the hooker. Goulding, Goulding gets it to Hansen. Here is Josh Charnley. Josh Charnley is halted by Richie Myler. Goulding again. Smith, Smith pops it up to Dudson once more. The heavy artillery takes it to the 10-metre line. McAlorum, O'Loughlin, O'Loughlin gives it then to Matty Smith and they hold him up. That's how close they are, and they have had four tackles, two to go. Sam Tompkins, off the ground to Blake Green. Green is halted by Hyam, good stuff from Hyam. Where's Matty Smith, he wants it, no. Sam Tompkins has gone through. Too long, too strong, yep. down the hill, down the hill to Bedfordshire. Should be attacked by Warrington on the, uh, on the 20 metre mark. You'll see that it hits a whitewash over the over the top. So Warrington's opportunity to tap this. 
They've got to get on with the game. They're not going to realise it. It's, it it's, it's all about positioning now. Look at this pass, Steve-O, from, from Sam Tompkins. But when you're 24-16 up, Eddie, you, you can take the gamble because you know that your team has been tackling furiously in the second half. It's not just about making tackles, it's the way and the technique involved in the tackle. Look at that one from Wigan. There's no way that Warrington can play that ball quickly, which is one of the things that their feed and thrive off really so far this season, as Hill now tries to get up there, but unless they find a quicker play of the ball, they won't try and find a way to strike back. Myler gives it width and finds Monaghan. Monaghan then to Breers, and Grix tries to battle his way past Blake Green, but can't. Here is uh, Chris Bridge. Steve-O doesn't have the onerous task of picking a man of the match today. That goes to the gentleman of the Rugby League press. I just wonder, with Blake Green having got up off the deck, he's got to be, he's he got to be, be a, contender. a contender. He has to be a contender. So is this fellow as well, Sam Tompkins. His linking game, very, very good. OK, they missed their chances, did Wigan, in that, uh, in that first half, but they've taken him this time, haven't they? That looked as though it was a high shot. Richards is down. Well, the Wigan crowd went potty. And Pat Richards hasn't got up. Well, that certainly was... Uh, there's a punch coming here. Yep. Mike Cooper. Yep, didn't miss. Well, we saw one early in the game from Westwood, and we've seen another. Oh. Yep. And that, I reckon, will be the ball game. Well, it's tough enough. The game is tough enough yep. without all this. Yep. He's bringing the touch, Judge. It would not surprise me if this guy walks. We've got a slightly different... Okay. It's diff go, on, go on, Stuart, it's different, isn't it? Because it's actually in the incident. We have a different situation because we've got the information at the time of the incident so that the officials can deal with it. No, well, nothing happens. He's just had a word in his ear. They've, they've seen it. It's a penalty to Wigan, yes, but nothing happens in terms of on report or any colour of cards. They're talking about a Harry Sunderland trophy. Mike Cooper put his team in a, in a bad position here now, where he swung his arm in, and again, that's one of the instances you think the player knows exactly what he's doing there. And he's cost his team a penalty, and he'll cost them yards. But I want to throw a name into the hat, Eddie, for Harry Sunderland, and a name not just in this game, but who has been brilliant, and that's Michael McAlore. You see Pat Richards recovered. Michael McAlorn's been out on that field since minute one. Playing Steve on the position you know all so well, in that hooking role. How much effort he puts into attack and defence. He's a, a dogged and determined defender, Phil said. How they're slowing the Warrington players down, winning the ruck. Michael McAlorn is a large part of that. And on top of that, you've got to give a praise for Sean Wayne, his coach, because we know he can be a little bit off the boil. We know that he can do stupid things, give away. He has been controlled all the way through this game. Well, if Blake Green gets the Harry Sunderland Award, only three Aussies have done that before him. Dorothy, uh, Boyd and Mackey. Uh, John Dorothy of Hull KR, Greg Mackey of Hull, and Les Boyd of Warrington in 86. If uh, Michael McAlorum gets it, only two hookers have won it in the past. Matt Diskin was the last, 2004, and Steve-O was the first in 1973. So he, he would join an illustrious group. <laughs> Wouldn't this surprise, is Darrell Goulding. Wouldn't surprise me, he's had a fine game. But it's not your job, so you won't get the aggravation, whoever gets it. Matty Smith tries to slide it in, that's played that, it's going to be six to go for Warrington, they cannot get their hands on the ball this second half. It was played that by Warrington in defence, so we six might, more tackles here. We might see a one-point here, ready? Definitely played it at Carvel. The so official Green got it right. Pops it up to Mossop. Mossop trying to pierce this tiring Warrington defence. Look at the clock, seven minutes remaining. McAlorum. Green. Green to O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin to Farrell. Liam Farrell goes to ground. Grix stood his ground. Four tackles gone. Here's Blake Green again. He pops it up to Ben Flower, the Welshman. Go for the one. <laughs> Don't think they will somehow. No, they won't. McIlorum, O'Loughlin over the top. Richard strolls in. Richard's on his farewell. Will take home a double. Can't see Warrington fighting back now. Wigan have won the grand final. And fully deserved.
deserved their second half showing. Impressive. And the crowd are absolutely loving it. To come back from 10 points down at half time and display the skill factor. What all went wrong in the first 40 has all gone quite nice for the chairman and the players and for this man. What a farewell. Two tries in a grand final. And don't rule this guy out for being the man of the match either. Pat Richards. An easy strolling. They're down and out of the Wolves. There's no bite left. What an end to a career in this country for that man. Uh, one try for Richards, four goals so far for Richards. I'm getting too excited. <laughs> <anyway>. <laughs> yeah. But as I say, he's been an integral part of the success over many years in the Cherry and White. And none more so than tonight. The steadying penalty, remember, early in the game, got them off to a start. Then it was all Warrington. It looked as though they had it. They were controlling it. But Wigan have fought back. And how? Yes, and how. And uh, Richards, who's averaged in his Wigan career 11 points a game, has now scored 12 in the grand final and has now scored 14. 30 points to 16. Wigan are on the way to a double celebration. The contrasting emotions of professional sport. When Sean O'Loughlin drifts this beautiful pass over the heads of the Warrington defenders, you know what they're thinking? Oh, no. You know what Pat Richards is thinking? Oh, you beauty. Ball down, four points. Quick kick, six points. What a night it's turning out for him. They went for the short kickoff. Warrington and uh, Wigan have come up with the possession. Well, a dream finish would be for Sam Tompkins to end his uh, Wigan career before he goes to New Zealand. Will he finish with a flourish? And boy, wouldn't the Wigan fans enjoy that. And do you think that that man, Pat Richards, enjoyed that try? You better believe it. You know, Wigan have had some successful times over the last 100 years, Eddie. But I don't know if there's been a season as successful as this. Their under-19s have won the championship. They are the best youth team in rugby league. They've won the Challenge Cup and the Grand Final, and they've sold three of the players and made a massive profit. You know what? Not many sports have turn a profit. What a year that's been for Wigan. Well, they've just got to keep it going now in 2014. This is a smashing kick, and Charlie's charging after it. And he couldn't take the risk, Lee Breers, or could he? Did that... That yeah, ball must have bounced on the whitewash. He did. Or foot on the whitewash from Breers. He took a huge gamble here. It's uh, smart thinking. See? As soon as he got his foot on there, as soon as he touched it, that meant they could pat, tap it on the 20. But the way that Wigan are defending, they have just ha they've, they've hammered Warrington. What a comeback in the second half. Only three teams in the past have come back from a half-time deficit to win a grand final. Or rather, two teams in the past. This is the third. It just has not gone right, has it? The two injuries obviously has played a, a huge part in Warrington's demise. 28 unanswered points for Wigan. 16-6 it was at half-time. There were 16-2 down at one stage. And Sean Wayne and Yustin Harris, their celebrations can begin. Well, Eddie, he's... He's kept the faith, hasn't he, Sean Wayne? He's kept the faith. Stefan Ratchford, one of the players, has had to come off the field. So disappointing for him because he's one of the best attacking players in the league. And when you combine that with Joel Monaghan, Warrington have lost two very, very good players. Massive blows. I don't know whether or not that, that would have affected us. We don't know. That's the thing about this game, we don't know. One thing we do know, if you have possession, you have territory, you apply pressure. And what we're going to have done in this 40 minutes in particular is applied a lot of pressure to this Warrington side, and Warrington haven't had the response that perhaps we might have seen in the past, and maybe those two players being on the field would have been able to assist a better response. Well, Ben Flower gets to his feet and will play it to McAlorum. Here is Matty Smith. Now it's Blake Green, short ball to Liam Farrell, and Liam Farrell backing his way towards the line. 
the Wigan forwards, especially in the second half, have been outstanding. It's Matty Smith with a drop goal. You beauty, he's missed. missed it. <laughs> he went for it though, Steve. Oh, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah, could not believe it. He tried and failed. He knows it as well. And there is one happy man, one happy coach. <laughs> and the smile on the face there of Matty Smith and said, I missed it by a mile. Hit it is again. Well, maybe half a mile. Listen to this crowd here. It's obviously the cherry and white supporters that are making all the noise. It's silent down on the left-hand side in the Warrington end. They know that their chance is gone. I'm hearing a whisper that Blake Green is the man of the match. He's won the Harry Sunderland Award. So he does join the three previously named Australians as the winner of that uh, coveted trophy. He's got up off the ground after being punched in the second minute of the game and he's come up with a match-winning performance. It'll come back, that was a free play. And he's been ably assisted, hasn't he, by a good team effort. And he knows it. Sean Wayne knows that the young forwards, they've certainly lasted out a lot better than the, the Warrington pack. It's all smiles, it's all noise, it's all cheers from these people. The double is theirs. And here's a good point for you. Wigan last year lost Brett Finch and Thomas Lulawai. One was man of the match at Wembley, the other's man of the match tonight. We've said it all during this year, Eddie. They have been seamless in the transition between losing those two great players, Finch and Lulawai, and bringing in Blake Green and Maddie Smith. It's been brilliant, seamless, what Sean Wayne has done and what in particular the players have done. They were underdogs going into this game, only narrowly. They weren't written off, they might say people are writing them off, but putting Warriors as favourites, you still respected how good this Wigan Warriors side is. And with some things going their way, the loss of Mona and the loss of Ratchford, they have showed us they are absolutely good enough to exploit that and be deserved winners of this trophy. Well, they haven't beaten Warrington in Super League since February 2010. They've won when it matters, and Bridge... Sam Tompkins was after a try. Bridge sort of it, he wasn't going to get it. I don't know whether they've got enough time for the goal line dropout because there's only, as you can hear, that many seconds left. Warrington, some crucial and massive talking points in this game. The Ben Westwood incident in the second minute, Green getting up off the canvas and winning the Man of the Match award. The injury to Joel Monaghan, and then the tackle that put Stefan Ratchford out of this grand final. But chairman and coach won't be bothered from Wigan. I think Warrington might have one or two things to say, but. Sean Wayne and Ian Lennigan won't. And I wonder whether that was another year's extension to his contract, because when he won at Wembley, he got an extra year. They've won the double. And what an heroic part Sean O'Loughlin played in it as well. It was a huge gamble that Sean Wayne said that Sean O'Loughlin had not played since Wembley. Last week, he was in one of those calipers, and we thought there's no way he was going to play in the grand final but he has and he will have that wonderful pleasure of lifting the magnificent trophy they are the champions yes super league champions 2013 the wigan warriors they've made history no team has ever come from fourth and played here obviously no team has ever come from fourth and won here and blake green has won the harry sunderland award as man of the match and he's got a shiner to match it Thanks, Eddie. Yeah, Blake Green, man of the match. Congratulations on that. Have a bottle of champagne to celebrate. Listen, you, your face is a mess, but I don't think you care at the moment, do you? No, nah, mate, it's... Um, I don't really care what it looks like. That's the best feeling I've ever had in my life. It was unbelievable, you know. We, no one really thought we could do it and win the double this year after we won Wembley. It's, everyone wrote us off, and it was just a great effort tonight. We know you got whacked in the face early on by Benny Westwood. Do you, do you remember much of what went on? How did you manage to pick yourself up? Well, I remembered what went on. I just... 
I just got one in the head and just sort of had to, I couldn't see for a little bit there, it was just a little bit blurry, but um, I just want to say a massive congratulations to our forwards, they were outstanding and you know, they just kept turning up for each other, we were down 16-2 and just kept working hard and, and throwing shapes at them and got the result. That's the biggest fight back numerically in the grand final. Where did it come from? I know you got the try before half time, which gave you a little bit of a boost, but it was still a terrific second half. Yeah, well, Wayne, Wayne probably he gave it to us a little bit at half time and just said to us that he thought we were only playing about 30% of what we got and we need to be more physical with them. And we all we spoke about it during the week. We knew that the game would turn eventually if it was other way. So um, we just hung in there and we're lucky it turned for us. Well, well done. It was a really special moment. Well played tonight, Blake. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks very much. Sean O'Loughlin says, Sean, come and join us, if you will. You've only played one game in the last two months, and that was the cup final. So two games, two big win, big final wins for you in the last couple of months. Terrific. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't have asked any more to get back to this game. Was, it was touch and go, but we had a lot of help from the physio staff and the conditioning staff of the club to do whatever they could to get us back and just about made it to there. How much of a risk was it playing tonight? Because we know you had a little spell on the sidelines. That was more my lungs, my lungs were struggling a little bit in that second half, but no, I, don't, I don't think it was too much of a risk, but you don't get too many opportunities playing these games, so it was, I, was, I really wanted to get, get back. Can, can you just express finally what it means to captain a Wigan double-winning team for us, Sean? Yeah, that's great, but captains is a bonus on top of it. The boys are playing, playing alongside these boys, that's the most important thing. And We've had a great season, we had a bit of a slum after Wembley, but we picked ourselves up, dusted ourselves off and had a, had a great playoff game. Well done, for John. Thanks, John. Pat Richards, listen, when you went to bed last night dreaming of the perfect final, that must have been pretty close to it for you, wasn't it? Winning and then scoring the last try at the end there? Oh, yeah, mate, it's an absolute fairy tale. Um, wasn't the best of starts to us, and, you know, uh, credit to our boys, we stuck in there and um, wanted to turn a good side. They put some points on us early, but, you know, we come home with a wet sail. It's been a terrific eight years for your Wigan, hasn't it? How do you sum up the whole emotion of it all now as you realise this is your last game? Oh, I, can't, I can't describe it, what I'm feeling right now. I've, I've had the time of my life over the last eight years. I've met, met some absolute great people. These are my best mates out here, and uh, I've got friends for life. And I just want to say thanks to all the Wigan fans and all the fans in Super League as well for making my time and my family's time over here so special. We, we thank you for the entertainment you've provided the last eight years, Pat. Best wishes when you go back to Australia. Thanks, cheers. Come on in, Sam. Last time you'd have to ask these silly questions. Uh, terrific. I mean, just the perfect way to go, isn't it? You know, you go away with a double and a terrific comeback here at Old Trafford. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. This is this is probably what we dreamt of. Uh, you know, there's a few of us leaving, and and you know, all the other boys were a real tight group, and, and they spoke about a fairy tale ending for a few of us. And um, to think we've got it, I don't think it's sunk in yet. This is it's unbelievable. Greatest game of my life, that one. You've been written off a few times this season, but also with about five minutes to go for half time, no one gave you a prayer. Where did that come from? That energy and that desire in the second half, particularly. I think it's it's what you just mentioned there, desire and belief. I think. We're a really, really tight group, and, and we know that if we stick to our game plan, we'll, we'll go on and win. And what makes it sweeter is before the start of the season, as you know, we were we lost a few players. We got written off to be finishing fourth, fifth, sixth. Well, we've gone and won the two big trophies, so you know it, it's good to silence some people. You're going to miss all this, aren't you? I am, unbelievably. Um, you know, it's strange to think I'll I'm not be playing in front of these blokes and, and you know with this shirt on again. But you know, I'm looking forward to what's to come. Well, thanks for all your entertainment over the last few years. Wish you all the best in New Zealand, Sam. Keep going. Can I just say, well, thank, I do appreciate what Sky Sports done for me, and Neville Smith. Thanks a lot for that. Thanks, Sam. Thank you very much indeed. Let's see if we can get Sean Wayne in here because he's talking to the, some of the Warrington players and congratulating them on their season. Sean, thanks for coming across to coach a Wigan double-winning side. Sum that up for us. How good does it feel? Uh, it's, it's an unbelievable feeling. I, I thought we, we, know, we were great in the second half today, but the carry to the show to score that many points in the second half was outstanding. I can't tell you how pleased I am. You know, they, they've bought into the system all year and... I'm so proud for all, all the staff, you know, all the coaching staff. Medical's been outstanding, you know, so I'm, I'm a really happy man and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rip into it this weekend. Some of the boys said you gave it to them at half-time because it was a disappointing first half. How badly did you give it to them? No, it weren't bad. It weren't bad, just a, a few old truths and, uh, and they responded like they do all the time. They, they're my mates, you know, and, they, and I can tell them straight the way it is and, and, uh, and they respond. They're good lads, you know, they, they work hard and... You know, I have a lot of respect for, especially all the lads that's leaving, they've done some good stuff for me. You hit a real trough after the, uh, the Wembley win, didn't you? A real bad run in the league. How did you manage to dig them out of it? Because it seemed that the season was sort of spiralling downwards. Hey, hey Rod, I, I know everybody thought we were going to lose today. Everybody, including yourself. Um, but when, when we played at Wembley, big emotional few weeks after that. And, and you, you take a dip, it's hard not to, but we come out of it, great performance, you know, a few weeks after. But, you know, it, it just shows the character of the team. It was outstanding again. 
Well done, Sean. You'll enter the record books as a double winning coach. Thanks, Dogden. Cheers, Thanks very much. Thanks. Tompkins, the first up onto the winner's roster. He'll shortly be joined by his teammates behind him. He's been a sensational player. Maybe in the future, one day he may come back and play again in Super League for the Wigan Warriors. Well, let's hope that he does return to Super League in whichever colours. I know Wigan have got the first refusal on him if he comes back in the three years that the uh, contract in New Zealand has to run. And, uh, well, as I said in the commentary, they said that they couldn't play without the likes of Lulawai and Finch. But, boy, they can play with Green and Smith OK in the halves. And it's an outstanding year that Wigan have had, an outstanding season for them, an outstanding season for their coach, Sean Wade. And it will be a wonderful moment shortly for Sean O'Loughlin. All 17 men have played their part in this victory. We thought they'd blown it, didn't we, early? When Goulding and Charnley failed to gel, as they have done so many times this year. But they came back and they, in the end, took the game to Warrington. And poor old Tony Smith, he is now the only coach that has lost three grand finals on this stage. But big Sean Wayne, he's 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one in only his second season in charge and won the double as well. So the last man to come up is the captain. He hasn't played until tonight since Wembley on August the 24th. His 350th career appearance came on this, the biggest stage, Old Trafford. And he will receive that trophy now from Brian Barwick. And Wigan are the Super League champions of 2013. Marvellous moments for Wigan, the players, the coaches and their supporters. Well, if you went back to the 80s and 90s, Wigan enjoyed lots of success. It's again a time for the club and their supporters. Martin Fire was a member of that victorious side that had a golden era for the club. This next generation could be the beginnings of that. Michael McLaughlin, delighted one of the toughest, most compromising players in Super League. He's uh, played his vital part today in this wonderful success. And that shot shows you, Phil, that it takes more than the 17 players that go out on the Old Trafford pitch, and Sean Wayne is their coach. It takes a huge staff to get a victory, to bring a team throughout a 27th round season, then through playoffs, then here to Old Trafford, and become victorious. There's so many people these players would like to thank, I'm sure. Medical staff, office staff, everybody associated with the Wigan club that has all contributed throughout this last 12 months to getting them here at this very moment in time. Great moments for the likes of Chris Tewson, who didn't make the final team, for Lee Mosser, Patchard and Sam Tompkins, who all move on now. No team finishing fourth has ever been to Old Trafford. No team finishing fourth has ever won the grand final.